Hey everybody, welcome to Cut, Transform, Glue and to another Scratch Build Combat Robot project. This is a very exciting project that, that came together super fast. I was kind of missing to, to build some robots just for fun without thinking about mold making and kit making. And so I just went for this one to have some fun and to create a really uh, badass looking combat robot. So without any further ado, let's get to the video. This project has a bit of a head start, uh, I mean the legs, the two legs that you guys are watching in the video they're actually the legs from the drum uh, dog build, this is a big project that I've been making here in the channel and I suggest you watching uh, those videos but anyways uh, these legs were creating using a bunch of uh, griblies, some styrene and of course a lot of 3D printing and uh, after, after I created uh, all of the segments of that lag uh, I took a mode of it uh, a rubber a silicon mode of it and I made some casts uh, to use on the drone dog and it was actually by accident that I discovered that the the four legs of the drone dog actually also worked as a two-legged uh, in a two-legged configuration let's just say that I was taking the whole thing apart and uh, two legs of the robot uh, stood still and I really liked what I saw and decided to start this new New project and as you can see this is the urethane resin cast except for this bigger piece right here this is an old resin uh, I mean I, I don't waste any miscast uh, from this project so yeah uh, most of the pieces that you guys are watching right now are pieces that are uh, kind of a miscast or maybe tests for the drone dog legs so yeah when I started the drone dog kit uh, I knew that I would end up with some pieces that could be used on other projects but this two legs configuration was uh, really a very happy accident but of course I need to connect these two legs together so uh, the first piece that I'm gonna make for this project is the waist and as you guys can see the starting point for this waist is this scotch tape dispenser right here which looks super interesting and that I had uh, for quite some time in my Gribbles collection also as you just saw I, I will use the ball joint system that I developed for the drone dock in this build uh, so yeah that will go on the top of the scotch tape uh, later for now let's just try trim this thing down and reach the shape that I want. This tiny part right here, this angle right here, I'm not even sure I'm gonna trim this down but uh, still uh, I'm gonna put some lines right here and decide about it later. And to cut it precisely and fast uh, I'll use my Dremel tool with this spinning blade right here. Uh, in plastics I just gotta be careful to, to not catch the blade into the molten plastic because that could throw the, the, the blade on the direction of my fingers, that would be uh, an ugly scene. And to keep everything together, I'll uh, just use some drops of CA glue right here in the middle. And then later on the top of that, I'll use some baking soda to add strength to the whole thing. The spinning blade leaves the plastic with some really ugly jagged lines so I'll do some cleaning with a sanding stick. And at this point I decided to keep that angled uh, tip right there and to cover the, the hole from the, the hollow scotch tape dispenser with a piece of styrene. And this process is actually very easy. I'm using this 2mm uh, styrene right here and to bend it I just have to use a, a hard tool against it till I match the angle. Also, as you guys can see, I started with this uh, really oversized piece of styrene and the reasons for that will be clear in a minute. Now I just gotta mark some uh, lines kind of roughly around the piece. I, I wanna still cut the styrene like bigger than the scotch tape dispenser and for that I'm using this snap knife right here. Thank you. 
okay so now that I have this tiring bent on a perfect angle and just slightly bigger than this scotch tape dispenser I can glue it with some low viscosity sea glue now let me try to explain you guys why did I left a two or three millimeter gap around this scotch tape dispenser from my experience, uh, uh, when you try to cut something flush to a piece, uh, breaking this tiring, you end up with an angle. And that angle can make the model look very ugly. And later on, you have to, to sand it down and add some epoxy putty. I mean, you may think you'll be saving time by, by breaking this tiring right to the edge of a piece. Uh, but from my experience, this is not a good thing. And so this is why uh, these days I prefer to, to cut this tiring bigger than the piece and slowly creep on the dimensions. I mean, I'll make it real flush with this in a perfect 90 degree angle. After a while of sanding, this is the result, and as you can see, the edge of this tiring is perfectly aligned to the piece. With all of that sanding, I also made the sides of the scotch tape flatter to later receive the socket of the ball joint. Uh, but for now, I actually want to work right here on this front portion right here. I want to make a, a very interesting air vent right here in the front. Now, of course, I have this angle situation right here, and so to attach this uh, air vent, I need to bring the whole thing to the front and remove that angle right there. And so, at first, I thought I, I would use some 3D printing to do that, so this is why I'm, I'm taking all of those measurements right there. But when I tried printing the piece, uh, I was kind of in a hurry, and I didn't, I didn't set it properly. I didn't add any support material, as you guys can see, and so the angle is like like a mess but at this point I realized that I, I had a much better technique to do that so this right here is just a piece of thick paper with some double-sided tape on it and my idea right here is to create a sort of a dam around the uh, the top of the scotch tape dispenser and once that's there I'll just fill that gap with some old resin And the resin that I'll use for that is this old resin that I have right here, as you guys can see, it is super thick. Uh, this is a mixture of uh, polyester resin and some card body filler. Also, I think that I use way too much catalyst right there, uh, but I think this is okay. The only side effect, uh, I think, is that the resin will set uh, extra fast. tons of air bubbles as you guys can see but I'm not worried about that this will get sanded and I will glue some structures on the top of it so yeah this is totally okay and after uh, some minutes the resin is set and I can remove the double sided tape now I just gotta give it some sanding and make it flat as flat as possible After a while it was flat and I also added this light curling putty right here on the sides because I had some gaps going on uh, from the resin uh, but now I can finally move on to the ball joints. Now as I said I'm using the same ball joint system that I've used for the drone dog. It'll be sitting right here on the sides of the scotch tape dispenser but I feel like I need a bigger uh, gap in between the, the two things and so this is when I found this thing right here. This is an old spray can that I have and on the top of it, on the tip of it, I, it has this interesting dome shaped plastic piece right here that I feel looks perfect. So I'll try to remove it uh, without breaking it and I'll glue it to the scotch tape dispenser. just like this and I feel it looks perfect now the funny thing is that I, I actually wrote on the side of the tape dispenser that I needed plus 15 millimeters and these uh, plastic dome actually measures uh, exactly 15 millimeters so yeah I couldn't be happier and uh, now the only thing right here is that the dome is kind of flimsy and so I'll, re I'll reinforce it from the inside with some pieces of laser cut MDF Thank <laughs> you. 
and of course I also use tons of baking soda right here I decided to to actually cover that hole and I have the perfect uh, laser cut MDF piece for that so yeah I just position it right here and use the low viscosity CA glue from the bottom uh, to attach the two pieces together CA glue with baking soda or maybe even with resin dust is probably the fastest way to take care of some tiny gaps. Okay, so now I just gotta attach the 3D printed ball joint socket to the top of the dome. Now that I have the MDF going on right there, I have much more uh, surface to, to keep these two pieces together. And just to be sure that the dome is strong enough uh, off camera, I've used uh, the same polyester resin mixture that I had uh, on the inside of the dome just to add just a bit more of structure and also uh, to take care of this gap right here uh, that's, yeah, that this curved uh, gap right here. I threw a couple of circles on the surface of the tape dispenser to find the center and now I'll glue this piece uh, to it with the low viscosity glue. Now I know you may think that the CA glue is not enough to keep everything together and you guys are right and for that I will just drill some holes, I'll counter sunk it and yeah I'll use a bolt, a, a, actually a wood screw to keep everything together. Yeah, my power drill, the only one I have, is super powerful and I actually almost broke the tape dispenser. I need to, I need to, to buy a smaller hand drill. Off camera, I repeated the same process and I created the other side, uh, the dome with the 3D printed piece and some resin on the inside to, to give it structure. And now I can finally work on the front right here uh, on the uh, air vent. Now for the air vent, I actually decided to go with 3D printing. So this piece right here was 3D modeled on Fusion 360 and I printed it on the highest resolution my printer could make, which is uh, 0.1 millimeter. Oh, and by the way, this design and many others are available for my Patreons on the Combat Robot tier, a link on the description box. But anyways, uh, I printed the fins of the air vent uh, kind of flush against the bottom to avoid using some support material. And so because of that, I had to actually also print a frame uh, to create some distance in between the fins and the, the bottom the, in the, the resin right there. So I just had to glue the frame first against the resin and on the top of that came the, the air vent design. I think that the gap right there is important to, to create the illusion that this is actually an air vent. Because of the resin, the 3D printed piece and the fact that this tape dispenser is hollow, this piece is super front heavy and so I'll have to take care of that and, and add some weight to the back of the robot to keep it balanced. But that's for the future. Uh, for now let's just put everything together and, and, and see if the waist looks good against the legs. Also, is it just me or does this waist look like a spaceship? I mean, in a smaller scale. So here's the result. I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. I feel like the tape dispenser was a good starting point for this uh, robot waist. And now I can finally start working on the body of this robot. Now I can already see a challenge right here, the tape dispenser is too thin to support the weight of a, of a body for this robot and so on the top of that I'll probably have to add some structure like this uh, laser cut MDF right here uh, to prepare the, the waist to receive the whole uh, body of the robot. But that's for the future, for now I'll just worry about the body of the robot. Uh, this is the starting point right here, this is a piece from a vacuum cleaner as you guys can see by the amount of dust uh, but yeah I'll, I'll use it to create the bottom of the of the body of the robot I'll just start by giving it some sanding to, to create to add some tooth to it so that the the other pieces attach better to it with some CA glue right here is a bit of a maker 
use uh, scrap building magic when I had just a perfect laser cut MGF piece uh, to go with this this is actually why when I go to the public maker space I make sure to cut different sizes of pieces and variations of it also when I cut some circles uh, I make sure to break it down into multiple uh, rings and so when I need to, to, to have this circle fully closed I just had to find the, the other pieces and glue them together with the sea glue as you guys are watching in the video right now on the top of the MDF right here I'll add this other gribby right here to, to add some structure to the thing and create some distance in between the body of the robot and the tape dispenser. And on the top of that, to hide those ugly features, I'll add another combination of MGF rings that were glued together. Okay, so now I can finally start working on the top of the robot and I'll begin by removing these features right here from the a vacuum cleaner uh, piece because those features are not useful for my design and they're really getting in my way. And here's the idea for the top of the robot. I have this round piece sitting on the top of the waist and on top of that I'll add uh, two big rectangles of wood just like this now of course I'm just kidding I don't want to make a rectangular uh, bodied uh, robot I'll actually cut a curve right here in the back to match the circle on the bottom so I did that off camera I've cut this round corner to this uh, 15 millimeter piece of plywood and the bottom vacuum piece will be glued to it just like this uh, with a distance from the uh, from the outer uh, border of the plywood and on the front right here I'll add these two gribblies right here I'll tell you guys about it uh, in a minute but yeah I really like these gribblies and I'll add them to the front of the robot but I still felt that the 15 millimeter plywood wasn't enough and also uh, a styrene is a better surface to, to work with so I glued these two pieces of styrene 3 millimeter styrene on the top Top and on the bottom of it now I'm just gonna eyeball the, the center right here I'll throw some lines with a sharpie and I'll attach it with some CA glue uh, from the outside CA glue is probably not enough to keep these pieces together so off camera I've used uh, just a bit of uh, hot glue from the inside to keep everything nice and tied together now let me talk about these two gribblies right here these two gribblies right here are super interesting to me I can find them easily on the streets of my city and as you guys can see there is even uh, somewhere from from it being outside uh, there is some discoloration of the green uh, as you guys can see right here I believe this is because of the sun uh, burning the plastic uh, these uh, pieces are used to, to, to keep some wires together on poles on electrical poles actually I believe this is used actually for the phone wires but yeah these are super interesting to me because they look super good and badass they are super easy to find here where I live lying on the ground and so yeah expect to, uh, to be on the next builds of this uh, channel I've had this for a little while and I, I couldn't figure out how to use them uh, but they look amazing as air vents for a badass looking robot they also make the robot look like a big harmonica and so there is that as someone mentioned on the comments on my community section of the channel and I really agree with it but yeah I still love this piece and I feel like it looks good for a combat robot now let's move to the bottom of the robot I need to add some details to it right here uh, if you look at my other models you, you, and if you watched some other videos you know that I love to add some like uh, ridges uh, to, to make the whole thing look more in scale let's just say that and so yeah this is what I'm doing right here I'm adding these uh, laser cut pieces to the bottom of it kinda evenly spaced
so this right here is the result and I actually did the same thing to the top of the robot I put some uh, ridges uh, on this section right here this one right here is kind of close to this one just to add some uh, I don't know just to change things around and make the, the design interesting now the white of the styrene is kind of making my camera to go crazy and I know it's early but let's add a coat of primer to the thing also right now my robot looks like if a harmonica had a baby with a car turbo but anyways let's take care of the top right here this is super empty and I need to add some structures to it like this lid from a Heinz ketchup bottle uh, yeah I need to, to create some structures to make this look interesting so I have this gribbling right here this one came from a unexpected source let me know in the comments if you know the source of this gribbly but yeah it almost matches perfectly the shape of the robot as you guys can see and I feel it would look amazing right here so I just need to trim it down and make some changes to it So it will sit right here like this, I'll attach it with CA glue to the top of the robot and then I'll close that gap of right there on the top that's open. Now I don't want this hole to be open so for each of these three gaps I made a custom 3D printed panel to go on top. And I'm not gonna lie, but it was kind of tricky to perfectly align uh, these pieces together. Uh, but yeah, eventually I got there. Also, fun fact, it, it may look by the gribbly that the three uh, slots, they were the, they had the same measurement, but this is not the case. The one in the middle is just slightly bigger than the first one. And the, of course, the one on the left, I trimmed it down, so it is the smaller one. Now, as I always do in my models, I like to add some angles after the fact. So right here in this corner, I'll create a chamfer on the top. So I remove most of the material and most of the styrene with an exacto knife. I just gotta make sure that my hands are not in the way of the blade. Styrene is not that hard, so it is uh, relatively easy to remove styrene with an exacto knife. And then I'll finish it all with some sanding. Now here's a quick tip for you guys. If you're trying to make a round corner with sanding, you just gotta wrap some sanding paper on a drill bit. Just make sure to choose a drill bit with the radius that you need. Now, of course, to create the chamfer, I need something straight and, I mean, stiff, so this is why I'm using the sandy stick. This is actually 3mm uh, laser cut MDF. I make all of my sanding sticks. The result's good. I really like this chamfer. I feel like it adds to the design of the robot, and I did a smaller one on the underside. Okay, so now let's go for that ketchup lid that looks like a hatch. Not that this robot is going to see any humans inside of it, but I feel like the hatch is a good design choice. Maybe it is like a service a access point for, for the mechanics uh, to work on the robot. But anyways, I add a, a 3 millimeter piece of styrene, some laser cut acrylic, and on the top of that, the ketchup lid with some gribbles and other laser cut parts attached to it. For the side right here, I made a custom 3D printed piece uh, to the precise dimensions of the robot to cover these ugly holes right here to hide the plywood lines and also to, to give me a chance to add some details later. Like this piece right here, this is a very interesting gribbly that I've had for quite some time that I've been saving to use on a special project and I feel it would look amazing right here on the side of the robot. I'll just attach it later with a bolt and a brass insert on the 3D printed piece. Now let's see how things are going together. So here's the robot uh, and let's also think about the, the gun of this robot, which in this case I believe will be a laser cannon. So uh, I've grabbed these uh, interesting gribbles right here and I quickly uh, put them together to look like a gun. I also added this structure right here on the side of the robot to be like the axis of that uh, laser cannon. 
the green piece came from a dead uh, DVD player and I 3D printed a pin and a tiny head to, to act like the axle uh, for the gun. So yeah, this is the idea. Now for this laser cannon, I th I'm thinking about using a ton of tiny DVD reader parts, uh, shiny parts to make it look interesting, uh, but yeah, that's that's later. For now, I'll start removing some features from the Griblis to create the perfect body for this uh, laser cannon, and I'll also, of course, use some laser cut uh, pieces on top of that. After a couple of hours of work, here's the result. I jumped ahead a bit because the, the video is kind of it's kind of getting too long but anyways i use some uh, 3d printed pieces i use uh, lots of laser cut mgf pieces and right here in the middle i have this piece which came from uh, from the top cap of a deodorant bottle uh, which fits perfectly onto the greeby that i started with in another uh, maker's magic moment Right here in the bottom, I kind of screwed up and I put the tiny head kind of uh, off center. So I had to remove it and now I need to take care of that hole right there. Also, if I'm being honest, I'm not too sure about this gribbly right here in the top, this white one. Uh, I'm not even sure I'm going to keep it. I may change it later. Okay, so at this point, I feel like the combat robot is in a good shape. I'm really happy with the structures that I've made and how it is looking for in terms of the overall silhouette of the robot. But still, I am far away from my goal. And to reach that goal, I need to start the detailing phase. So for the next couple of days, all I did was detailing. And when it comes to detailing, uh, what I do is I try to add as much detail as I can. I try to actually overdo it because once I do that and I put the final coat of primer, m the details, they kind of tie all together with the robot and I'll see that I actually didn't overdo it. And this right here is the result, so as you guys can see I've added tons of tiny pieces to the surface of the model like from the tiniest of the sequence as you guys can see in the corners right here to some bigger laser cut mgf pieces to some dead electronic pieces like these ones right here this is actually a good tip for you guys so if you take apart uh, an electronic you'll probably see something like this and inside each one of these buttons there's these tiny structures right here that from the bottom uh, look amazing so i drew some holes and i put them on the surface of the robot but there are tons of other details like these black circles uh, these came from some googly eyes like the ones that uh, you put on toys and also of course some 3d printed surface details right here in the front i decided to add like a metal rail so i've 3d modeled this structure right here to support it but yeah, I think you guys got the idea uh, when it comes to adding detail to, to the models, you kind of you kind of have to go crazy. So after the detailing phase, I put everything together, but here I noticed something very important is missing in this robot. The backpack. Where is the backpack of this robot? To create it, I'll begin with these two uh, flasks of medicine and I'll put them together with this uh, hot glue. I hate hot glue, I try to avoid using it as much as I can, but this type of plastic is not that good uh, with CA glue, so I had, to, I had to go with it. Now of course I gotta do my best right here to avoid the dripping of the hot glue at the outside. And if you guessed some 3D printed pieces, you guessed it correctly. So here are some 3D printed pieces that I've made for this a battery backpack. Again, uh, some hot glue to, to bring everything together right in the middle and some sea glue from the outside. And now I'll add some details to the side. Again, some 3D printed uh, tiny details that I made just for this piece. And as you can see, I surrounded the battery with this detail. In my mind, the, the battery kind of gets bumped around as it sits on the back of the robot. So uh, yeah, it needs to be reinforced. Now I just need to create an attachment point so that it can hang from the back of the robot.
and this right here is the structure that I'll glue to the back of the robot where the the battery will be hanging on. To make my life easier on the painting process, uh, these pieces will be kept separated. And right here seems to me like the perfect spot for that. Uh, it is kind of off center and I like that. And so without thinking too much, I just went for it and I attached uh, that piece with some CA glue. Okay, so now the robot has its battery backpack and the only thing left to do right here is to apply a final coat of primer. And this is the result. I couldn't be happier with this project. It is coming together super fast. I mean, I had a bit of a head start with the legs from the drone dog build, but still I made a very good progress in just a couple of weeks. And now, of course, I still have to, to add some details to the legs and to the waist of the robot, but that's for the future. I'll do uh, these things off camera and next time we meet again, we'll go for the painting of this beast. Thanks for watching.